Hey guys, it's Adam AK Swimming Bird, and welcome to Splatoon. That big update that hit recently brought some major changes to the game, with Splatfest receiving some radical rule revisions. But are we better or worse off for it? That's what I want to try to figure out today as we talk about the results of the three Splatfests that have been held since the update, and we'll also play some ranked mode so you guys have something to watch. Now, in North America, it was Snowman versus Sandcastle. Which would you rather build? In terms of popularity, Team Snowman took that. That was my team, and I kind of figured it would go this way because I never fought a fellow Snowman the entire time, all the way up to King rank. But in terms of wins, this is what's most important, 52% to Sandcastle. Not too much, not a huge gulf between them like some of the previous Splatfests, and I think that's a really good sign. We'll get into that in a second. But the winner, the one who takes home the most Super Sea Snails, you guys can guess from the wins, it was Team Sandcastle. Not by too many points, but they took it. Team Sandcastle wins! Snow! <laughs> Congratulations! Great job, my Sandy Champions! Congrats to everyone on Team Sandcastle. Now in Europe, they had Hoverboards versus Jetpacks, an awesome theme. Hoverboards won popularity and wins. And in Japan, it was a Dragon Quest theme Splatfest, but the Heel Slime team won popularity and wins as well. So I think that's also a good sign. You can see everything's very close together and it's not being decided by a huge factor. We've got our 18 Super Sea Snails. I think I'm gonna try to get some fresh gear here and we'll jump into ranked mode and break everything down. Okay, so the Splatfest. Things are much different now since the 2.6.0 update. The big change, though, is how we are matched up with other players. The vibe meter that's normally in the corner that you use to get extra gold from Judd and kind of tells you how well you're doing in the normal game has been changed to a Splatfest power meter. And this is a ranking that you'll be determined from the start of the Splatfest, but it will change as you play. Ooh, we're using the Nouveau set? I, I kind of forgot there. I'm so used to the, the normal Octobrush that I thought I was laying beacons down, but I was throwing Splat Bombs. We'll warm up here, though. It'll just take me a minute. So anyways, there we go. <laughs> we got somebody. So Splatfest Power, you'll start out with a certain amount depending on your ranked mode standing. If you're below level 10, you'll start with 800, and then you get 200 more for every rank up you go. So C ranks have 1,000, B have 1,200, A have 1,400, and S have 1,600. And this is going to determine who you're matched up with. Now, if you, you have a team that's set up, just like normal Splatfests have always gone, and your, your Splatfest power is determined by an average of all of your Splatfest powers combined. Like Captain Planet, your, your powers combined to make a team Splatfest power. And if you stick with your team and you're, and you're doing well, you can get more points through this. And the big thing that I really liked about the Splatfest, other than what we'll go into with the, with the results, was that you actually get more points depending on how you're doing with your power. And I was able to get to King rank about an hour and a half faster than I normally do. If you guys watch the big stream, I streamed my entire journey up to King rank. Look out for this ink Zuka. But, uh, but yeah, I got all the way to, to King rank in only about three hours or so, so it was pretty quick compared to normal, and I liked that, that element. Part of that could be to try to get the players that are really good to play for a bit and not have such a huge factor on the wins. So anyways, you have your power, and it adds a few points. I think at around 1,400, I, I was in A rank when I played that Splatfest, and still am, and I had around 1,400... Uh, Splatfest power points the whole time, and that went up and down, but it mostly stayed around there, as you would expect. If the, if the system is working right and you're matched up with players around your skill, you probably won't be moving up in your power too much because you'll be winning and, and losing and stuff. But I was able to get seven points for a win most of the time instead of the five that you would normally get in older Splatfest, so that was cool. And this whole system is basically so that we don't have teams of Splatoon, experts, the S-plus squad, squad battle players teaming up to just trounce anyone who's super new at the game. It's, it's a effort to try to balance the wins out a little bit, so the players of equal skill level are playing each other, and the wins actually mean more instead of, you know, having unbalanced things. Because in the past, you guys have probably seen, we've had 11 Splatfests, and the more recent ones, people have pretty much determined what team is more popular, and a lot of the more skilled players 
have seemed to join the less popular team, and they have an easier time because a lot of the time the more popular team seems to be joined by less skilled players. Like with the Pokemon Splatfest, for example, the theory is that, you know, Pokemon Red is more popular in that one because Charizard is uh, more popular with, like, younger people, people that might not be as good at the game. That's just kind of a theory, but I, uh, I think there is some truth to that because for a while now it seemed like the less popular team has always won the Splatfest, and jeez, gotta look out for <laughs> this roller's going crazy, he disappeared. Uh, so yeah, this is in an effort to balance out the wins, so you're playing against teams that are more to, uh, to your, to your skill level. I'm just gonna bail from that situation. So anyways, it changes depending on wins or losses, it goes up and down, and the player with the highest Splatfest power on the winning team gets a bit more of a boost to their Splatfest power to kind of get the MVP into the higher rank and keep them moving through the system. And then, you know, all, at the end of the match, your team is ranked based on their Splatfest level. So it's, it's a matchmaking style to pair people together with similarly skilled players, and, uh, and you get more points based on the average of that. Now, <laughs> now the... Uh, the bad thing about this, and I'll go into some of the negatives that I've heard, on my end it was really positive. I got a few connection errors before matches even began, but for the most part I had a lot of matches pretty quickly. I didn't have much trouble finding them, they went pretty well, wins and losses going back and forth. It felt really balanced, I got more points. It was a net positive experience for me. But I want to talk about some of the experience of other players that were playing as well, because obviously I'm not the only one playing this thing, and people of different ranks had to play and uh, and have it work. So we'll get into that in the next match. Just threw a random splat bomb out there to try to defend the zone. We got two players at the same time. I think we got this. Okay. Oh, I also want to show you guys my gear really quick at the end of this. So I used a forbidden technique with these sea snails, I have to admit it. I wanted to try it out and see how tough it was to get some good gear. And uh, I got a couple triple abilities on some of this. Some of the uh, some of the triple abilities were not the ones I necessarily wanted. I was aiming for damage up on my samurai helmet to complete my octobrush set, but uh, didn't get that. But I did get good triple abilities, so I wasn't gonna you know re-roll them and play with fate. So there we go. Let's get into another match. Okay. So I want to talk about some of the negatives. I switched up my gear to my ninja squid set. We're going to be a little sneaky bandit with my sloshy machine. Now, I've heard from some of the, the more vocal S players or S plus players, because they were ranked so highly, they had a real hard time finding a match in the Splatfest. They were limited to only players of their skill, and this got even worse as they got more and more points. The Splatoon team has started keeping track of the top 100 players on each team, and they have those all listed on the uh, on their site and everything if you want to see that stuff. We're going up against another slosher here. So yeah, I noticed that the, the, the top players, the top player on of everyone uh, was on Team Snowman, and they had over 2,200 Splatfest power points, which is a crazy amount. They must have been playing almost the whole time, and won a ton of matches to get that position. But yeah, having over 2,000 Splatfest points, there were very few people with that much. And I think the top four people on the snowman side were actually higher than even the top person on Sandcastle. So it, it must have been tough to find matches for them. Again, I'm, I'm learning now that I've got, I can, you know, just, I learned to tap my thumb on that jump to spawn button. I'm just gonna get out of a situation if I think I'm gonna get splatted. So, so yeah, it was very tough for people as they got higher and higher in those Splatfest matches to find fights to participate in. And for the most part, you know, if, you're, if you've already got max rank, you got your snail, you know, you're going to get the same reward, but a lot of people want to keep playing after that. I've done that before, to keep trying to get wins for the team and, and have fun. So I understand wanting to, to play even more after that. And it is a little unfortunate. It's basically the same situation where if you're really good in ranked mode, it's going to be hard to find players that are that are high ranked as well. So that was an issue. And I also heard that people that were even just S rank were having a really tough time because, like I mentioned, if you are a certain letter rank, everyone in that rank starts out at the same power. And I didn't notice it too much with my A rank, 1,400 Splatfest points. 
because I, uh, it's, it's just kind of like, you know, A minus, A and A plus all together. That's not too big of a skill gulf. But if you were an S rank and you were put into the same Splatfest power bracket as people S plus, there can be a big skill gap between an S, an S minus, and an S plus especially. So I could see the frustration there with uh, having a, a lot of people were saying that as an S player, they basically had to lose for about an hour before they were down to the Splatfest power points that made sense for uh, for their you know skill level because they had to base you know get knocked down away from the S plus players to even stand a chance at times. So that is unfortunate, but that's uh, it's going to happen a bit in ranked mode. It's it's kind of putting you where, jeez, <laughs> speaking of rank. Yeah, ranked mode and, and having frustrations. That 96 gal took me out in two shots. I knew that is how they, you know, that's how they do. But it still could be a little scary. But but yeah, so it, it was frustrating for players of higher ranks. I didn't hear about too many issues with players with lower ranks. But I know the the vocal minority online is the people talking about the game are probably the people really into it that are going to be higher ranked or put a ton of time into trying to play. So you're not going to get the perspective as, as often as some of the, the you know, fresh-faced squid kids out there that just started playing. If anyone, you know, was of, uh, you know, 800 or 1,000 or less Splatfest points, I'd love to hear how it went for you, how your connection went, everything like that. I know a lot of people have... A, uh, some issues with the Splatfest because we're only playing against North American players and I know across you know the US sometimes the internet connection isn't as good as there are certain other countries so it can be tough to uh, to not drop out or, or have a stable connection with people especially yeah during the Splatfest I've heard that can be an issue but overall I had a I had a positive experience and I like the fact that the Splatfest matched us up with people with similar skill, and I think that's reflected in the results. I don't think we're gonna take this one. Ooh, there's that gal player. Oh, get him! Jeez! <laughs> well, I took him out, but he took me out. It's just so much slower to hit him with the sloshy machine unless I get those direct hits. My aim isn't good enough for that yet, but we're getting better. But anyways, yeah, going up against, uh, going up against teams, that are more evenly matched for me made the Splatfest so much more enjoyable. It wasn't super one-sided at times, and it made it seem like it was anybody's game. Whereas most of the Splatfest before this change, at least the, the handful of uh, recent ones, all felt like a foregone conclusion. Whatever team was more popular was obviously gonna, gonna lose for whatever reason you wanna claim. That was just the way that it went, and uh, that's that's what happened. So they, they had to revise something. I knew it was coming. And I think they did a good job, so I'd like to hear what everyone thinks about it. I uh, I don't think they they might need to tweak some stuff. Like I think if they they did separate Splatfest power points for the different you know A minus A A plus, that might help out with people finding matches of similar skill level. But it also might make it tougher to find matches because right now you know you're playing normally you have the entire world to play against a lot more people, but if you're only going in one region, it might be tougher for them to divide those little brackets up any further than they already are. Are we going to bring this back? <laughs> going into overtime. I very rarely ever go into overtime and have it work. I got my special, though. All right. Jeez, I'm getting, getting caught up talking about the Splatfest, and we just brought back a crazy, like, 60-point deficit and took it back. There we go. You guys can see my other set of gear. Still using my pro trail boots with bomb sniffer and that ink recovery up, but I have my bandana with swim speed and I've got my shirt with ninja, ninja squid. I originally wanted that for the octo brush, but what are you gonna do? You get a triple ability, you wanna stick with it, especially if it's something that I like, like swim speed up or ink saver main. All right, let's do one more match here to finish up and wrap up our thoughts. All right, one more here. We're going to Anchovy Games, the newest map and the last one for now, unless they surprise us with something crazy. We got a legendary capper on our side, so <laughs> pretty confident we can take this. And I've switched back to my old classic, the normal Octo Brush, without the bombs. I, I get thrown out, you know, thrown for a loop a little bit when I switch sets with some of these weapons that I've played. The Octo Brush, I was looking at my stats on Splatnet, where uh, that's also where you can go if you want to see like the top 100 players and stuff like that. But I, uh, I was looking at my stats, and it was uh, a pretty big, pretty big gulf in between terrain inked. I have a ton more turf with this weapon than almost any others. 
All right, but but yeah, the, the Splatfest, jeez, uh, <laughs> carbon rollers can be real scary. The Splatfest, I feel like, went pretty well on my perspective, and I think for most players, it seemed to be a positive thing. I like that in the other two regions, it still ended up going with the, the less popular team in North America, but it was a very small gulf between them. And then in the other regions, the popular team won, but it wasn't, again, a, a huge deficit in points between the two teams. So I think uh, I think this is a good sign, and I think they could probably stick with how this is for future Splatfest. It's definitely improvement. It made the Splatfest a lot, a lot more interesting, I think. And going forward, the future Splatfest will be even more interesting to have them have uh, not a foregone conclusion. I was not going to risk that, but I ate one of his suction bombs along the way. I love that that kind of uh, not as well known feature of the Kraken is that it can eat bombs, and you might be able to save your teammates from uh, from an explosive if you just jump in there and destroy it before it can explode. I'm always very very scared of uh, those ink zukas when they come out because I pretty much can't do anything as the octobrush against them. I'm gonna try to be sneaky here. Don't have ninja squid, but you don't really need it if you're kind of creeping around and and staying in one spot. You'd probably be okay as the brush. I just I was ideally I was like I want ninja squid and and swim speed up as well as the double damage up that I that I need for the octobrush to get those splats a little bit faster and, uh, and try to compete with some of these super quick weapons. I'm gonna play Operation Infiltrate. Kind of go around here when I was playing on Piranha Pit using the beacons, I, uh, I've started doing a thing where I go into that, that part of Piranha Pit on the side where no one really goes during a lot of the ranked matches, and I'll put a beacon over there, maybe two. Sometimes that can help out people to jump in, you know, and, and get to the zone or get to the tower by, like, a, you know, a back door that no, nobody's going to expect as much, but at the same time, it has the added benefit of players chasing me down there or players going after those beacons, because just like sprinklers, people cannot risk or cannot resist destroying a little beacon there if you, if you see it. So a lot of people will go after that. They get distracted. They're wasting time, you know, trying to get me while I'm hiding and jumping out at them. So it can be... Jeez, speaking of jumping out, yeah, that's why I'm afraid of carbon rollers. They're not quite as strong as some of the others, but if they get close to you, they're so fast with that flick. But yeah, doing a, doing a little distracting technique can be fun, and it can help out your team. Let me refresh this guy's beacons. I love it when the team actually uses the beacons. I've had I've had matches even up in A rank now where it does. I put a bunch of beacons down in good spots too, and uh, no one no one goes for them. So it's weird to see people that get high rank and and still maybe don't know how to use the beacons or just don't bother. I, I know a lot of maps the strategy of just barreling in the same way over and over. That is, uh, that is still prevalent even in the higher ranks, so I try to go different ways and, and try to try different techniques to uh, make sure if I get splatted a lot, I'm not going in the exact same attack plan as before. Speaking of uh, operation, sneak up behind and mess with them. Let's uh, see if we can mess with the team here. Ooh, I had to crack in there because I saw that suction bomb. Come here, buddy. You got a bomb rush? I'm going to eat you. There we are. Uh, but yeah, anyways, so Splatfest on, you know, on the net positive for me, but I want to know what you guys think. If you have any comments about Splatfest, things that maybe I didn't talk about or notice from my perspective that you want to add, I definitely would uh, appreciate hearing it. Ooh, bomb sniffer saved me there, maybe. Oh, uh, hello. <laughs> Got so many guys all running around here. They're no match for this brush. There we go. I did notice, I have to say, even though I feel bad about using the forbidden, the forbidden technique to get the gear abilities that I want, it uh, it does help competing because I've noticed a big, a big step up in uh, what I can do when I've got the abilities that I, the, you know, benefit whatever weapon set I'm using. That is gonna be it. No, no uh, knockout, but I did get one splat right at the end. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to leave a like, I appreciate it very much, and I appreciate everyone for watching and hanging out with me during the Splatfest. We, we streamed that live and it was, a, it was a good, fun time. It's been a while since I worked my way all the way up to King Rank. The last few Splatfests I missed out on or didn't get to play the whole time. So it was nice being able to get there quickly but also have a fun time doing it. I'll see you guys next time for some more Splatoon. Goodbye.